All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Jerry with another epic video. Uh, today, guys, this will be the next video in our uh, How to Play Yu Gi Oh! series. The last video in the series, you guys saw me unbox the uh, Light Sworn Structure deck. So, I'll be going through how to build a deck using the, you know, buying three Light Sworn Structure decks as we did in the previous video, and then we'll just kind of continue to build on this with some other videos too. Uh, but I figured this would be a good next video in the series for us to do is go through and just build the deck basically. Uh, and go over the different you know deck profiles and do some you know some hand uh, playthroughs and some things like that uh, and go over their effects and just how to over overall use the deck and play the game itself guys so this will be I'll try and keep it as short as I can but I want to make sure it's you know very informative for for new players as, as is what the many the video is intended for of course uh, if you guys are not yet subscribed please get subscribed and also make sure if you're still loving the content that I put out you make sure you smash the like button as well please uh, with that being said guys we'll go ahead and dive into the video. Uh, so as you guys see here is Judgment Dragon. So a Judgment Dragon, we definitely want to use three of him in the deck, guys. Uh, once we have four different Light Sworns in the deck, you're going to be able to special summon him from your hand. Also with his effect, uh, he lets you destroy all your uh, all the cards on the field, including yours too, except for himself. So everything will die on the field except for him uh, by paying a thousand life points. So he's really good, especially if you have, it's very easy to get, you know, uh, more than four, uh, four more light sworns in the graveyard with different names to be able to special summon them out. So, so I'll try and let's see. No close. We'll go through and do it like that. Yep. All right. So we see him. Uh, so next is Raiden, guys. So we definitely want to use three of the Raidens. He'll help speed up the deck too. Plus he's a tuner on top of it that we can use to play our synchro uh, Michael as well that we'll look at later on. Uh, so for Raiden, guys, during your main phase, after you get a normal, you know, get a normal summoned out to the field, you can activate his effect. He'll, you can send uh, two cards from the deck to the graveyard with his effect, and they happen to be a Light Swarm monster. He gains an additional uh, 200, uh, 200 attack into the uh, into the end of your opponent's next turn. So when you end your turn, he'll still have the two hundred. Your opponent goes. He'll still have the two hundred. When it comes back to your turn again, he'll lose the the two hundred if he's still on the field. But of course, then you can activate his effect again, and then you hit another Light Swarm monster card. You know, same thing again. Uh, when you end the turn, when you end your turn with this one, guys, he discards uh, two cards from the deck uh, as well, and we'll go over what that looks like later on. Uh, Jane's really good, guys. I only would, uh, you know, some of these units you know, kind of depend on the different styles of this deck you want to build. Uh, with the version I'm going to go, I would only use two Janes, guys. I mean. It's to me. It's all you. Only, you only want to use three, uh, more than likely, because there's a lot more better ones like the Raiden that we looked at that you definitely want to use three of. Uh, he basically just gains 300 attack when you attack a, a monster during the damage step. It's like if when I uh, go to attack when I enter the battle phase, when I go to attack, he's going to gain the 300, making him a 21 during the damage step only. And then when I end my turn, I send two. Uh, Two cards from the deck to the graveyard. So yeah. Uh, for this one, you guys can use you know, depending on the version, you may, you may use more than one Celestia. My version only wanted to use one. You probably could bump it up to two if you wanted to. I probably wouldn't go with three. Three is, to, in my opinion, too much for the deck. Back in the old school days, you definitely would run three, but now you know one or two would be you know two at the max. Um, so yeah, in this case, I'm just going to run the one of uh, one of her. But you tr if you tribute a Light Sworn Summon, uh, a monster to summon her, guys, you can uh, send four cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard and then destroy up to two cards uh, on your opponent's side of the field. So we got one of her. Uh, Gregonis. Gregonis is one of my favorite ones, if not my favorite one out of the entire deck. Uh, he's really, really good, guys. He's a 2,000 attack. He's a, you know, a one tribute since he's a six-star. Uh, he gains attack and defense equal to each different Light Sworn monster with a different name in your graveyard. So let's say that you have uh, 10 different ones, just to make the math easy for us all. <laughs> uh, if you have 10 different Light Swarms in the graveyard, uh, he's going to gain 3,000 attack, because it's 300 for each each different one. So if we have 10 different ones with 10, with 10 different names, he's going to get 300 for each, which would be 3,000, making him a 5,000 attack. Uh, and he also does damage and defense, guys. Um, so any, anything that you attack that's in defense mode, you would take your opponent would take the difference of the attack. In this case, five thousand or whatever their defense is, they would lose that out of their life points. Uh, during the end of your turn, you would have to send three cards from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, 
for him, you know, for, uh, in order to resolve him in the field, stuff like that. So uh, we'll use two of him. Let's see. We got enough to kind of leave him at the end. Uh, Lila, uh, yet again, this one can you can add a, can, you guys can as far as the build using you kind of use your discretion, and they just kind of what you're noticing uh, the play style how the deck plays, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Uh, I would only use two of them, guys. I mean, there, there may be some cases in some versions you may would you know want to say three, but uh, to me, like I said, I feel like those are the ones that could be better used for three. But I only use two for two uh, Lila's with her with uh, when you summon her out, guys. You can activate her effect. Uh, to switch her to defense mode, and then she can destroy a spell or trap card on the field. Um, but then she can't be turned into your uh, the uh, basically to basically your next turn to basically to back to attack mode. So she has to stay in defense. Uh, so more than likely, it's very rare that she's going to stay again after you keep her in defense, unless you've got some sort of trap card to keep your opponent from attacking or something like that. Or maybe you've got something big on the field, like a, like the you know the five thousand Gorgana that I mentioned, so they're not going to attack your you know, 200 defense Lila that's in defense mode uh, because they're, you know, they don't want to get hit by, your, you know, your 5,000 <laughs> 5, attack Dragonath or something like that. Uh, at the end phase, you send three cards to use her effect. I'll list also, guys, at the end of the, uh, in the video description, I'll list the, uh, the numbers that I use specifically for this uh, deck profile. So I'll have all that listed down in the description of the, of the deck. Uh, some of these I had to end up using to try and save a little bit of money because I've been spending more money on the other unboxing videos that I did. Um, I use some of my own, own versions and stuff like that. When you bought the structure deck, right, you got the three structure decks, you have all the cards, so you're good to go. But for me to help kind of save money to, as far as making the video purpose-wise, I did use some stuff from my personal collection. So you guys may notice that when we do some of the test hands here in a little bit. Uh, for Garoth, guys, uh, he's really good to kind of help speed up and draw some cards to you. Um, so each time, like a, like let's say we activate one of their effects during the intern, uh, we can send basically two additional cards from our deck to the graveyard, uh, and then if we one happens to be like a light swarm, you know we can draw an additional card uh, due to us discarding a light swarm based on his effect. I only use one yet again. He's he's good just to have a different one for name and then also to speed up the deck. You really don't want more than that. Uh, for Lumina, I only use one Lumina as well. You, you may want to, you know, depending on the version, you may want to use two. Three is too Three is way too many, uh, but two max, depending on the version you're wanting to run. But my version only runs one because it just makes sense for only one. Uh, with her guys, once per turn, you can discard a card to special summon a four or lower. So we could bring back, you know, some of the ones that we've kind of looked at already, like the Raiden, the Jane, Groth, or Lila, by discarding a card from our hand, and we can bring back. Uh, one of those guys to the field. During the end phase, though, she does cost three cards to send to the graveyard, so she has a very high cost card for discarding. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, for Aaron, I only use one of her. When she attacks a defense monster, guys, she can send it back to the deck before damage calculations. It's a really good card to get over like something in defense, or maybe it can't be destroyed by battle in defense. Uh, she's a really good card to get around stuff that's especially stuff that's in the defense mode. Uh, I'll only use one of her yet again as well, guys, and in this one you have to send three cards to uh, during the intern for her to. Uh, wolf's really good. Most of you guys want to use a wolf as two, or you know, at least you definitely want to have at least one in the deck. But one or two, three may be too much. Uh, depending on the version you're using, if it's like a very fast version, you may could get away with three, but I would keep it, you know, one to two guys, two being at most. You maybe yet again, it's one of those things you want to kind of try out and see. The bad thing is when they clump in your hand, you can't normal summon Wolf, so he can only be summoned basically if you end up having to like discard him from the deck. Then he'll special summon to your side of the field, which is really good. Like when all your monsters, you know your other Light Swarms effect kick, kick in during the end phase, he'll special summon to your side of the field in the in, during the end phase if you happen to send him to the graveyard. Um, but yeah, he's really good. So just kind of you may want to play around with him, but like I said, two at most. Uh, I've got two in this particular version, but yeah. Honest, uh, I've only got two in this version, guys. Like I said, this to me, I felt like three would be overkill because uh, I wanted to make sure I had enough different light swarms and things like that in the deck too. Uh, so with Honest, if you guys are not familiar with Honest, what happens with Honest, like during the damage calculation phase, uh, Honest was kind of really one of the first uh, hand traps before hand traps were a thing, guys, if, especially since you guys that are newer, you'll get used to hand traps and stuff like that too. But this was basically one of the original hand traps before hand traps was really even a, a thing. Uh, 
what Honest does is you can discard it during the graveyard during the damage step, and you gain your opponent's monster's attack points. So let's say, like, we go to attack their monster, and our, our attack's like 2,000, and theirs is like a 5,000. I can discard Honest, I'll gain their 5,000. So now my monster's a 7,000 attack during the damage step only. After the damage step, it'll lose, you know, it's going to kind of, uh, is it, yeah, the damage step, or graveyard... And, okay, it's the end of this turn. Okay, so it's the end of the turn. So you have to know something that can attack twice, but this deck doesn't. So it really doesn't matter. So it's only going to keep it to the end of your turn. Uh, so basically, you're only going to get that one attack out of it. Because there's nothing else in here that can attack twice, guys. So so basically, you might as well look at it from the end of the damage step, like I was saying. So it's not much it's going to do, <laughs> do you any good unless you do use it on your opponent's turn. So that's really good to use it on your opponent's turn, kind of as a defensive move. They go to attack one of your weaker Light Sworns. You discard Honest. Now you gain their attack until the end of the turn, and bam. So it's really more of a defensive play. You can use it offensively too to maybe go for a quick, you know, quick game, uh, and things like that. Uh, Shree's very good too. Uh, she's one of my favorites too because a lot of people don't expect her, and she's one of the ones you can add to your hand pretty easily too, or just maybe you get lucky and draw her. But she gains uh, three hundred attack also as well for each Light Sworn monster that's uh, in the graveyard. So for her. If you have like yet again like the example that I gave 10 she would gain 3,000 so she would be a 3,400 attack and you can normal summon her without tributing so she's really good and you don't and you only have to send two cards to the graveyard uh, during your end phase for her. I, I'm using two for her because yet again she's so very good uh, it's like to me you, you can't afford not to use two of them just because she's so good uh, and Minerva, I only use one of Minerva guys. She's another tuner as well too. When she's normal summon, you can add a light dragon, so you can I can add like my Judgment Dragon or my Gorgonath, uh that we looked at earlier based on the different numbers of light swarms in the graveyard. So if I have at least six different of these guys in here in the graveyard, uh, I can add Gorgonath. If I happen to have eight or more, we can add the Judgment Dragon to our hand just by normal summoning her. So. It's a really good card to pull stuff from your uh, from your deck to your hand. So if you have six different Light Sworns, we can pull Judgment. Uh, if we have eight or more, uh, we can pull uh, Gorgonath, sorry. And then if we have eight or more, we can pull uh, Gorgonath. So, uh, but I only use one of her because, yet again, that's the only th thing that makes sense. But those are the monsters, guys, that I use. I feel like that's the best kind of for this particular version. We're going to use just stuff strictly out of the structure deck. Uh, since that's all we're gonna go for this build, we're gonna take that you know you used all the money you know you're, as far as you went budget wise to build the deck was strictly the you know enough money to buy the the uh, just the three structure decks to build it. So just kind of keep that in mind. I, we didn't I didn't do any different. Uh, what you know twenty dollars or thirty dollars like I see some YouTubers do sometimes. If you guys would like me to do that, I'll make some rec recommendations at the end of the video. Like if you wanted to spend you know ten twenty bucks. You know, something like that to add a few cards. I've got, I'll recommend a few things at the end of the video. Uh, but yeah. Alright, so let's look at spell cards next, guys. Uh, we'll go into that really quick. I'll try and go a little quicker because we'll talk about the cards, how they work. You want to use three solo recharges. They're like the pot of greeds. They're going to allow you to draw cards. Uh, so you want to use three of them. You also want to use uh, three of the Charge of the Light Brigades. They're kind of like the reinforcement of the army for the deck, they're going to add your lights, your lower level lights ones from your deck to your hand. Uh, for this, guys, I use two foolish burials. For this one, you, you could get away with just using one, but you definitely want to have at least one in the deck. Uh, also, put in two monster reincarnations. Uh, you could get away with one, but I, with it being very little spells in the structure deck, it just makes sense using two because uh, it wasn't really a lot of good, you know, spells. To use other than the structure, other than like those, so it just made sense to use at least two, and then I use at least two of the uh, Light Sworn Sanctuary. This one makes it easier for you guys to kind of it's like a monster reincarnation, but it just allows you to swap out the ones uh, from your uh, like if you have one in your graveyard, you can discard a card and add one of your Light Sworns in your graveyard back to your hand. And then also, if any Light Sworn monsters you have to be destroyed, you can get rid of the sh Shrine Counters, which they get Shrine Count. It gets a Shrine Counter. Every time, like one of your light sworn sends cards from the uh, the deck to the graveyard, it gets counters to you. Uh, but we'll look a little bit more out here in a little bit. So those were the the spells. We'll kind of leave those there. All right. So the next, we'll look at the trap cards, guys. So 
Skill Breakthrough, this is kind of the card you want to kind of help negate effects. Uh, it can be used basically twice, you know, once when you activate it, and then again, um, like if it's in your graveyard, you can't do it the turn it's sent, so like if you activate it on your turn, maybe your opponent activates a quick effect monster or something like that, you use that to negate it. Uh, then it goes to the graveyard, of course. Then it goes to your opponent's turn. Maybe they try to use the same monster's effect again or another monster's effect. Then you can remove it from play and use basically the same effect again. So it's a really good card. I would recommend using at least two. You know, you may want to try it out with three, depending on the version that you're you're using. Uh, but we'll see how it plays here in a minute just with us using two. Uh, Light Swarm Barrier. I would only use, you know, one of these guys. Uh, this one kind of helps, like, if you're... Like, if you, your monsters get attacked, you can send two cards from the deck to the graveyard to stop your opponent's monster's attack. And you can do that as many times as you would like. Uh, Beckoning Light basically allows you to discard your entire hand to add back uh, Light Swarms equal to the number of cards you... Not Light Swarms, but Light Monsters from your graveyard to your hand based on the number of cards you sent, you know, discarded from your hand at the graveyard. So if you only have, like, three cards in your hand you can add three light monsters from your graveyard back to your hand. It's a good thing to add, like, the Judgment Dragons and stuff like that we'll look at. Uh, Glorious Illusions, like the the Call of the Haunted, basically, for this deck, you can bring back a monster from the graveyard and special summon it, guys, but the only downside is you have to send cards to uh, your in phase for this, too, so not only are you sending cards for... Uh, let me do this one, because it's the one with... For your monster cards effect, you're also sending cards for the Glorious Illusion, so you got to be careful and not burn out of cards. Uh, Vanquishing Light, I put two of them in here because I think it's very important that you're, you know, we're stopping our opponent's uh, special summons or summons that we really don't want on the field, so I put two. And then you guys would have, of course, three of the Michael uh, Synchros with getting the three structure decks. So, uh, But that's it for the deck profile, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is we'll quickly just kind of shuffle the deck out really quick because uh, as you can see, everything's kind of really clumped together. And then what we'll do is we'll go through a few test hands really quick, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll maybe do like one or two, because I, I don't want to be, too, like I said, too long of a video. So I'm going to try and shuffle to do this very quickly, just like the spells and traps, to try and get them spread apart. And then we'll kind of do the same thing for the monsters, just really kind of... Uh, Quick light guys, so we can get through and get them gone. Moving around. And then I'll kind of shuffle them all together, and then we'll kind of try and like pile shuffle them maybe a little bit too, and try and get everything spread around so we don't draw nothing but monsters, we don't draw nothing but spells or something like that. So we want to try and get them, you know, pretty well shuffled the best we can. These are new sleeves, that's why they're being a little harder to to shuffle. So Alrighty. All right, so I think we'll kind of do it like quick sets of four guys. I'm just going to do it like this, then I'm going to reshuffle again really quick. And then we'll draw our hand and see what we can get, guys. But I just want to make sure right, I'm trying to spread them up as much as I can since we just did the profile. So I can give you guys at least, you know, uh, you know, at least you know, decent, you know, decent uh, preview of the deck and how it works and the mechanics of it, uh, and how the deck plays and things like that. And just in case you haven't heard of this deck, it's it's been around for a very long time. That's why I picked it for the profile, and it's very easy to understand. Most of the other like structure decks are very involved, and to me, starting out something that's very involved, especially being a new player, is very confusing. And then if you get confused, you get frustrated, then you quit playing, then you don't want to play anymore. So then you're gonna either give away the cards that you have or you're going to throw them away and stuff like that. So I wanted to pick something very quick, very simple, and still a deck that can be, you know, pretty decently competitive and also we can continue to build uh, the deck as we continue to go through uh, <clears throat> the series and things like that. We'll turn it into, you know, maybe like a chaos deck or something like that down the line. But I figured this would be a good video because we can amp it up with a lot of, you know, newer support and stuff like that that's not in the structure deck. Uh, just for the Light Sworn itself, because there's a lot more cards that's come out for the deck that's, you know, that's just not in the structure deck. So, and like I said, at the end of the video, guys, I'll make some recommendations. Alright, so I think that's pretty decent, guys. Uh, 
we'll cut and we'll see what I draw. Alright. So for you guys to see, we'll kind of go. Alright, so we got Monster Incarnation, Vanquishing Light. We didn't draw too good of a hand so far. Wolf, Cherie. Three, four, five. We'll go ahead and draw six because we'll pretend that we're going second. Alright, so it's actually not too, too bad, guys. So what we want to do with the hand that we got, right, I'm trying to spread everything out so you guys can see what we got. Keep in mind, remember, I'm using some cards from my own collection, like these, the Wolf and the, uh, the Shree, both of them are from my collection to help save money on the video. Uh, so what I would do, guys, if I got this hand, right, and I go in second, uh, we're definitely going to, the first card we're going to play is obviously the Solar Recharge. We want to activate it because it's going to let me uh, discard one Light Swarm monster, which in this case we're going to discard the Wolf. Uh, we'll pretend that's the graveyard up there. And then what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to draw two cards and then we're going to discard two cards. So we're going to draw two. So one, two, and then we're going to send two. So one, two. So now we've already got two different light swarms in the graveyard. So there's not much else really we can do with the hand that we have. So the Glorious Illusion we need to set that face down. Vanquishing Light, you know, we could kind of set down too. Uh, or what we could do if we wanted to, we could really play that and add uh, Lila back if we wanted to, which may be the best play probably for this. Uh, but we'd have to discard something. So we'd probably Minerva would be probably the best thing for us to do. So that's probably what we'd, I would do, guys, is activate Monster Reincarnation. Probably a bit early, but uh, discard Minerva to add back Lila that we discarded. Also, since Minerva's discarded, her effect activates two now, guys. She also sends one card from the deck to the graveyard, which is another Shree that we have in our hands, so that gives us a little more attack. Uh, so that actually worked out very well for us. That's cool that we did that. Uh, so good move there. So we'll put this Vanquishing Light face down so we can negate one of their summons. And then what I would do is put, you know, finish our turn with Lila in attack mode, leaving us with the Sharia and Gorgonath, you know, still in our hand. I'll put over here. Uh, then what we'll do is we'll end our turn, and then we have to send three cards from our deck to the graveyard. One, two three so we had a different light swarm so that's very good and we'll say our opponent goes to summon or something like that guys you know maybe they try to tribute their monster or something uh, we'll go through and negate it right all right and then you know we'll say we'll get a next turn hopefully and then boom we'll draw all right now we've got honest so we don't have too bad of a hand right we've got shree We've got Gorgonath, and we've got an Honest. So we can make a really good comeback move. So what we can do is use the Glorious Illusion. If we didn't already, we could have used it if they attacked to kind of block it if we wanted to. And then what we could do, guys, is I would bring back... I would bring back Lila. Bring back Lila in attack mode. So this way we can activate her effect, like we talked about earlier. Switch her to defense. Destroy one of our opponent's spell and trap cards. We'll just pretend that they have one for the sake of the video. Uh, destroy it, and then what we would do is tribute Lila to summon Gorgonath out to the field. So now Gorgonath, we'll see there's one, two, three, four, five. So we already have five, guys. We just started. Uh, it's our second turn, and we already have five in the graveyard. So, gain so Gorgonath gains 1,500. So he's a 3,500 attack. So we can, you know, we should have more than enough attack to go over our opponent's monster. If we don't, remember, we still have Honest in our hand that we can discard to gain their attack points. Uh, so we'll say we attack, right? They go through, bam. Uh, goes their turn. Maybe they try and overpower him. If they do, right, we Honest it. So at least at this point, they've probably taken, probably lost at least half their life points. It goes, well, also forgot to send three cards, my bad. So he actually gained more points, too, so he's actually a 30 he would have been at 38, yeah. So he definitely lost half their life points at this point. And then we would draw and get Wolf, unfortunately. Uh, but then it doesn't matter because, right, we have Shree still in our hand. So we can summon her. And now since we have, what would that be? I think it was 
one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six different ones, yeah, so six. So she gains 18, so she's a 22, and he's a 38. So more than likely we would have game on our third turn, depending on what our opponent did. So it's not too bad, guys, depending on right what your opponent did and what cards they drew. Uh, so it's not too bad for a first test, test hand and kind of a mock playthrough uh, with the deck. All right, I'll do one more, guys, and then we'll call, and then I'll go over the recommendations, you know, if, if you wanted to spend a little bit extra money to help fix up the deck, uh, a few things. You know, nothing too fancy, but just something to kind of basic to get you kind of started. It would be you know, probably like $10 or less, 20 pushing it. All right, so we'll do this again. We'll draw, so one... Three, four, five. We'll say we're going second again. Six. All right, so not bad. We drew this time kind of all monsters, though. So what we would do, guys, is we definitely want to activate our uh, sanctuary. So we'll activate it first. So that way when we start uh, sending cards, we'll get our little tokens down here in case we want to swap out something later on. And then we'll set our... So breakthrough skill face down in case our opponent has some effects that we can want to negate next turn when it's their turn. And then depending on what they did, of course, either way, we're going to summon out uh, Aaron. Let me kind of move our cards over here. That's technically in our hand over here. So you guys can still kind of see them. So we would summon her out, guys. Depending on what they have, right, we may attack or not. More than likely, you're probably just going to end your turn. But we'll say that's what we do. We don't attack. We just end our turn to... Three, we hit her, which is good, because we get to send another card. Perfect. So we now we've got two different Light Sworns in the graveyard. Uh, and then now this card gets a counter. Uh, I don't have a token, so <laughs> we'll use a card sleep. <laughs> uh, all right, so we end our turn, guys. And then we will let the opponent go, and then boom. If they destroy our monster, there's a good chance they'll... Attack, more than likely, Destroyer, that's fine. And then we'll go our turn, we'll draw. All right, we drew a Glorious Illusion, that's perfectly fine, good card. Oh, and then what we would do after that, guys, what we can do, because we have three different ones in the graveyard, is what we can do is we can discard the wolf in our hand using the Sanctuary, we discard wolf since we can't play him anyway, add her back to our hand, and then normal summon her back out would be the best thing we could do in this case. Uh, then end our turn again. Send three cards. Two, three. Since it's during the end turn, Wolf would special summon. All right. And then we would get another counter. All right, and then it would be our opponent's turn, and then depending on what they have, right? Uh, if they have something right for an effect, let's say they try and do something effect to destroy one of our monsters, we'll use the breakthrough skill uh, to negate it. Oh, uh, and let's say they try and you know, let's say they kill Monk again, they're able to overpower her because we didn't get rid of their monster, so we just have Wolf left on the field. And then it goes to our turn again, right? We would draw. We got beckoning light this time. Uh, so what you guys can do now. Is what we can do. Let's see what all other ones we have in the graveyard. They would be good. Oh, so what we could do really good is use our effect. Let's see. Oh, this has to be a monster. So we could send if we wanted to. Yeah. So I would send Shri. I would discard Shri, guys. Discard her. And then add back Celestia to our hand. And then what I would do is Tribute Wolf, Tribute Wolf, summon Celestia, activate Celestia's effect. So we'll send four cards, one, two, three, four. Now we'll destroy two cards, we'll say we destroy their uh, our opponent's monster cards. Then we can do, you know, then we can special summon Judgment Dragon from our hand now, because we have way more than four in the graveyard. And let's say we destroyed all their monsters, then we can attack them with directly with both. Then as we're going into doing our last attack for our battle phase ends, activate the Glorious Illusion. 
and then we can bring back where we'll bring back Shri and then she'll get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven, so 21. So she's a 25, guys. So that would be pr more than likely game. And then you would wipe out your opponent that turn. All right, guys. That's a few, few test hands going through. But hopefully that kind of gives you an idea how the deck works as far as discarding the cards from the uh, their effects at the end turn that you discard cards. Uh, that's the only part that may be confusing how to use the deck. But that's why I wanted to go through and... Uh, do a few test stands so you can see it wasn't too bad we were able to depending on what the opponent our opponent did uh, and the deck we're playing against usually within the, you know second to, you know probably second to third turn of our turn we're more than likely able to go for game I was able to do, you know probably do pretty decent with both hands that we got especially with you know something just built from a structure deck so just kind of keep that in mind uh, and of course you know as you continue to play and buy cards and packs like that you'll continue to make the deck even better just by buying cards and things like that. Uh, the only other things that I would recommend, guys, if you're going to spend like an extra 10 bucks or something like that, uh, would be to, you know, more than likely definitely get yourself a Monster Reborn so you can bring back, you know, one of your monsters from the graveyard. Uh, so definitely I would do that. Uh, also, another good one is the Judgment Dragon of Heaven. He just got re released in the, uh, in the Battles of Legend set, so he's probably pretty decently cheap. And he's pretty, he's pretty easy to pull out of the pack, too, so you could probably get him out of a few singles, uh, more than likely. But probably be just cheaper to buy him by himself on TCG Player or, or eBay or something like that. Uh, next one would be Minerva, Minerva the Exceed one. Uh, she's really good. She's very easy to play, too, and she helps speeds up the deck uh, and destroy and stuff, and plus draw cards at the same time, too. I'm trying to get where the glare's gone. There we go. Uh, so she's a good one too, guys. I would get you know a few copies of her. She should she should be you know probably probably five dollars or less per card. Probably you know probably less than two if I had to guess. But she should be pretty cheap. She's really good. And then uh, Curious is a real good one too to kind of help uh, speed up the deck. Plus add like Judgment Dragon or something back to your hand. But you know for something for like you know ten dollars or twenty dollars or less, guys. That should get you these four. I mean, more than likely, you probably could get all four for less than ten bucks. Uh, but those would be at least, you know, if you get like a ten to twenty dollar budget, is to pick up. I would say those four cards, depending on where you, in the price you find them, you may could get some more stuff. But I wanted to mention those specifically because that would help the deck even more. Us having those as kind of like backup and give us a little bit extra plays uh, that we could do with the deck specifically, besides just having uh, Michael for the the synchro in the deck. Uh, but if you guys have made it to the end of the video, like always, I greatly appreciate it. But I hope you guys appreciated the video. I'm going to continue to make more of these tutorial videos and things like that. Uh, I guys also started uh, Twitch as well, too. So if you guys haven't followed me on Twitch and you and you have a Twitch account, please make sure you do that. I play a lot of the uh, Link Evolution on the Xbox on there, and I play some other games as well. I was actually playing Paladins this past weekend with my friend Matt. Uh, so if you guys will... You know, join there. You're more than welcome. I can chat with you guys real time, like I do in the live streams. Usually, I'm live streaming uh, on YouTube, and I'm also live streaming on Twitch uh, at the same time too. But sometimes I just kind of a live stream on Twitch if I'm playing something like Paladins or something like that. That's you know that's non Yu-Gi-Oh related. Uh, I sometimes don't stream that on YouTube. Uh, I mostly just stream that on Twitch when I tend to do that. Uh, but that'll do it for this video, guys. I greatly appreciate. It. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Okay.